you're looking for your first camera or you're somebody who gets often asked, what camera should I buy as my first camera? Well, Sony might just have the answer for you because in front of me is the Sony ZV-1F. It is a, the little sister to the existing Sony ZV-1. Awesome camera, but this camera comes in at a lower price point, similar feature set and design. It might even be that much easier to use for vlogging or any other social media content. Packaging is fairly minimal. Um, I know Sony is trying to go with the whole zero waste. If you've seen the ZV-1, the body is basically exactly the same, but they are also using a Sorplus, they call it, um, or Sorplus. I do not know what percentage of the camera is using this material, but it is a recycled material, so that's always nice to see. And it does still feel like a camera. I mean, it feels more plasticky than uh, other Sony cameras that I've felt, but that's to be expected since this is a budget camera. So on the front of the camera, we have the 20 millimeter F2, which is a brand new lens. The original ZV-1 had a 24 to 70. And the reason for this is you'd have to kind of hold your arm out fully straight, even on the widest 24 mil on the ZV-1 because between the 4K, which adds a crop to this image and the active stabilization, you would crop in so much on the image that even at 24 mils on a sensor this size, you kind of have to really be reaching to get the shot that you wanted. Whereas now, hopefully, you'll be likely able to not worry about that as much. On the top of the camera, we have the cold shoe, the microphone, an on off button, a mode selection button, a very large record button, a zoom rocker with a shutter button, and then the focus defocus button, which you can actually remap from the looks of it. This just allows you to, without having to even know how to use the settings on a camera, allow you to get the shallowest depth of field, blurriest background in your image. On the rear of the camera, we have the touchscreen LCD, a function button display, the standard camera Sony rocker, which just allows you to do, I believe, your shutter speed, but I think you can remap it. Menu, play, and delete. On the right of the camera, we have a mic input, a type C input, and a micro HDMI input. I understand this is a small, a budget camera, but I hate micro HDMI and it should never be used on a camera, even if it's small. And finally, on the bottom of the camera, we actually have an interesting change. So the ZV-1 had the quarter 20 mount here in the center of the camera, like every other camera. The problem with that was when you would need to open the battery door. Because when it was here, when you'd open the battery door, well, if, a, if you had a tripod plate on this thing, you wouldn't be able to open the battery door. So every time you needed to change your SD card or your battery, you had to take your tripod plate off. But it's also now off center. I understand the trade off, but that's something new. It's just kind of weird because no other camera has the mounting point off center. And then of course, when I open the battery door, we have the 1240 milliamp hour, uh, what is this battery? The NPBX1. Okay, let's turn it on. But first, a word from our sponsor, Grammarly. Thanks to Grammarly for sponsoring this video. Communicating online through emails, Slack, or Discord can easily be misinterpreted and can become a huge time block. This is why all working professionals need a desktop app like Grammarly. Grammarly provides comprehensive spelling, grammar suggestions, and ensures your writing is mistake-free, professional, and polished. Simply install the free desktop app, log in, and start typing. There's also Grammarly Premium, which provides more in-depth feedback on your writing, such as tone transformations to adjust your tone and sound more confident. You'll be more productive with their Clarity Full Sentence Re Right feature that helps you rephrase hard to read sentences so you can come across more clear and confident. Work smarter, not harder. Go to grammarly.com slash short circuit to sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium today. I've actually used this a little bit. At 1080p, you have some very low bit rate options, 50 megabit or 25 megabit, which is gonna be great for your card space. Like, let's see, I have a 64 gig card in here. It's two hours and 35 minutes at HD. Man, now this is an 8-bit camera, which is fine. You don't necessarily need 10 bit, especially if this is your first camera. This is what the menu looks like standard. Well, you have audio meters here, which is really nice. All your settings on the bottom. It tells you which mode you're in on the top right here, which we're in manual exposure right now. We've got the product showcase feature, which was on the ZV-1. So the idea is I'm talking to the camera. Product showcase is on. And so now I'm gonna bring this lens cap into frame. And hey, look, it focuses on that. I did actually test this feature last night and it did struggle in a low light situation when you aren't front lit 
Um, but you're actually backlit. And let's see if it can focus on this. Oh yeah, okay. It really depends on the device. I, well, I had a phone case on a different iPhone. It was struggling. And you can kind of see it struggling here as well, actually. The product showcase feature is gonna be really useful for a lot of people, especially if you do like makeup videos or something like that. There's also a little self timer button here, which is nice to have. And then you also have your digital clear image zoom, which is Sony's way of just saying higher quality digital zoom. I believe it is oversampled slightly. You're gonna have worse autofocus performance in this. Oh, that's a little bit disappointing that you actually can't use the clear image zoom 2X unless you're in HD. So if you see this, I'm in HD right now. And then if I go to, you can see now wide 1.0, 1.5 and 2X clear image zoom. And I believe you can go in between those. These are just like the quick presets that are there for you, but you can just use the zoom rocker and actually adjust that. So this is not zoomed in at all. And then this is the 2X zoom in HD. The wide shot at 4K, and then this is the 1.5 zoom. So it's definitely not as wide. Andy just pointed out that we also have a little tally light when we're rolling right here. If you also wanna make it more comfortable, you can use something like Sony's grip. This is the optional accessory that kind of worked with a lot of Sony's stuff at this point. It's kind of a general purpose grip that you can Bluetooth to the actual camera, get record and your zoom and all that. You can keep your shot more level. Yeah, so let me know guys in the comments what you think of the audio quality of the studio test. But now I'm going to take it outside and see what that's like. And Tim, go outside. You wanna make sure you also have your dead cat so that wind noise is not an issue. This thing is also actually made out of recycled plastic, but it's so fluffy. We're back from outside. I just finished transferring the ZV-1F video files to my XPS and I'm also transferring the iPhone files. But while we wait for that, let's try the live streaming feature. So most new Sony cameras have a feature that allows you to use them as a webcam. And in this case, this should be pretty seamless. All I should do is plug in the camera through Type-C. You get a prompt when the USB is connected. So you can go live streaming, image transfer, or remote control. I'm gonna select USB streaming. I have um, a bunch of rubber blocks here to act as like a stack of books that you could also use this with instead to get kind of the optimal angle. And I mean, compared to the Dell XPS webcam, this thing is a lot better. If you live stream or you wanna do some higher quality video conferencing and you already own this camera for vlogging, well, this is a great use case, I think. Something to note, you actually can't access the menu while you're in the streaming mode. It is on. <sighs> okay, as you guys could see there, the skin softening feature was on by default. There are people in the world that would have that feature on, but let them turn it on themselves. Okay, so product showcase is on, skin smoothing is off. This is what you can expect the ZV-1F to look like if you use it as a webcam. And if you use the product showcase feature, there you go, right there and then back to me. Nice. This is a much better looking shot than this. In my left hand is the Sony ZV-1F, and in my right hand is the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and I'm using them both on the Sony Smart Grip because we just happen to have two. I'm also using the D, it's the clear focus, so I'm at a deeper f-stop. So if I actually press the D focus, it's gonna use a much higher f-stop, but then give me a shallower F2, probably depth of field. The shutter speed's really high right now. It's one over 800. In theory, the background is much more out of focus. But this is what the audio sounds like when you're talking directly at this camera. So now I'm facing this camera. There's a car passing me by right now. Walking through some trees. It's, it is not having to focus that difficultly, but it also is refocusing pretty quickly. And then it goes right back to me. Now this is contrast-based autofocus, so it's not as good as the phase detection in other Sony cameras. But that is one of the cost-saving measures. This is with my arm kind of fully reaching out. And then same with the right arm holding the iPhone. Man, it's really hard to vlog with two cameras at the same time. Just walking back to the office right now. It's like a not super windy day, overcast weather. And so from this distance, I hope this mic actually sounds pretty good. I will note as well for this test, I'm using the front facing camera on the iPhone just to kind of give it a comparative use case because 
if you're going to vlog on an iPhone, you're gonna hold the selfie camera facing you, not the rear camera. This is what the selfie camera looks like compared to the ZV-1F. This is just my first impressions, guys. This is not a review, but if you currently vlog with an iPhone and you're happy with your setup, especially if you have the new iPhone 14 Pro Max, you might not need to switch to something like this. The benefit of something like this is that it's a separate device that you can use with the express purpose of vlogging or using it for TikToks or social, anything like that. And it has things like a shallower depth of field, a larger sensor, the ability to use it as a webcam. If any of those things will benefit you beyond it being your phone and you don't wanna use your phone as your primary working device, then I think this makes a lot of sense. But if you wanna take your $500 and spend it on kitting out your iPhone or whatever device you have to be a better vlogging machine, well then I wouldn't blame you because this is small, very compact, relatively inexpensive, but it's not strictly better in every situation. And it is better in low light because the sensor is gonna be larger, gonna be able to capture more light. It, it will really shine in those darker situations where the iPhone or any other smartphone will not. But it really depends on how often you're in a situation like that on top of all the other features. So what do you guys think of this camera? I actually think it's pretty cool. I think my partner actually wants to pick one up. So I might still end up owning one, but I like what Sony is doing here. It has a couple issues. The autofocus being contrast based, kind of hunted as you could see in those clips. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and thank you guys for watching.